This is Dr. House. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that you're working on a Left 4 Dead 2 map and you'd like to add a jukebox to it. Well, to do that, first, in Hammer here, I've already got a test map loaded up for the sake of this tutorial. And what you'll want to do is go to File, Open, and find the jukebox VMF. And to do that, you'll go to the root Left 4 Dead 2 directory under Steam Apps Common and then Left 4 Dead 2 then go to SDK Content Map Source Instance and scroll down to Jukebox and open that. Now if you scroll out a bit you can see there's a Jukebox here so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and select everything by going to Map Entity Report clicking at the very top and then shift click at the very bottom to select everything and then edit copy everything and of course paste it into my test map here and let's see if I can do something about the position there real quick now while everything's selected you can uh, click your selection over here in one of the three grid panels and you'll see the little handles on it will change shape and when they change to this you'll be able to rotate the thing alright oh that's uh, actually 180 degrees facing the wrong way well uh, let's see it's not exactly perfect the way it is right now but for the sake of this tutorial it should be just fine now, when you get your jukebox and put it into your map in Hammer Editor, there are two things that we need to change first. And first off, let's see here. Just deselect everything. And you'll see there are a couple of sound files around this whole jukebox thingy. Now, uh, there are two sound files down here sort of embedded in the jukebox themselves and that's for the record start and vinyl needle sounds but the ones we're worried about are the ones right above the jukebox and by default you'll actually have seven of those which are ambient music entities imported and I don't know why there's only five this time maybe I screwed up my instance somehow but anyway The first thing you want to do is change the sound name value in each of these ambient music entities. And by default, they're going to be jukebox.badman1, jukebox.writen, and so on and so forth. And of course, you should change these two new names. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to change these to jukebox.testmap1, and then hit apply over here change it to jukebox.testmap2 and so on with the rest of them and once you change all the sound entry names the second thing you need to do is click on this purple checkerboard over here which is the logic script entity now uh, when we go in game we want the jukebox to call for a special v script which is in other words a nut file in ut and so to do that properly we're going to want to use a custom nut file and so with the logic script selected we turn off smart edit mode by clicking this and then in the vscripts field here we're going to want to change that to a new name and again for the sake of organization i'm just going to change this to jukebox.testmap hit apply and that should be all we need to do here in Hammer. You can go ahead and compile your map. Okay, next step, we're going to deal with the nut file itself, or the vscript, in other words. And as you can see, I've already got a folder set up here in my add-ons directory. For the purpose of this tutorial, test map is going to be the name of my level. And so that's the name I've chosen for my folder. And uh, if you don't have one already, go ahead and create a scripts folder in there, and then another vscripts folder. And within this folder, you should paste the nut file, which I have linked to in the video description. 
And of course, again, you need to, you you might need to rename this nut file to the name that you've chosen right here in the logic script. See, in here, the vscript field calls for jukebox underscore test map, so I would need to change this to jukebox underscore test map, but it's already like that. And as for the nut file itself, you shouldn't need to edit it at all. The only thing I've done is changed the rare song chance over here to 90, so that hopefully those two rare jukebox songs will play a lot more often, although that does not seem to be working right now. Anyway, we're done with the vscript nut file, so going back into your root test map directory, or my root test map directory, Next, you'll want to go into the Maps folder and again, paste the Level Sounds text, which I've linked in the video description. And uh, with the Level Sounds text, you will almost certainly need to rename that. And the way you name that is very important. You need to name it like your level name here, underscore, level underscore, sounds dot text. So, for instance, if you were compiling a map named Tumtara, you would type in um, Tumtara, underscore, level underscore, sounds dot text. Hopefully, you get the idea. Now you can go ahead and edit up that, I mean, open up that text file in your favorite text editor. I highly recommend Notepad++, makes things so much easier for this. And you should find a bunch of stuff pasted in there already. Maybe not exactly like this, but the important section is music over here. should be pretty easy to find. And there are two things in here that you probably want to change. And they happen to be these two uh, bits of text highlighted in green. Okay, so looking back at our map over here, we want to have a look at the ambient music entities. And because I've got the first one over here named jukebox dot, actually it should be jukebox dot test map one. Since I've got this one named jukebox.testmap1, that is the exact same name that I need to enter up here, as I've already got it. And you need to do the same down here for your, your uh, six other music entities, or ambient music entities. You see I've got test music 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 in total. Ah, ah, ah. Anyway, the second thing you want to change on each of these seven entries here is the wave file path. And you can type in whatever kind of direct directory you want to use. Just keep in mind that it is going to be relative to the sound folder of your add-ons folder here. So, for instance, in this wave file path, I've got it set to music trh test music one dot wave so that would actually be located in my test map folder under sound music trh and here's test music one dot wave okay another useful tidbit if you place right before your file path, for instance, right before any of this highlighted text, I've got an at symbol. And if you place that right before your file path, that tells the game that that certain sound entry can be heard anywhere on the map. And in other words, it won't decrease in volume the further away you get from the entity which is emitting it. In addition, if you add a pound sign right before the file path, that tells the game that the volume of the sound is going to be based on your in-game music volume settings. So if you've got your music completely turned down, you won't hear anything. Keep that in mind. But that again is only if you add a pound sign right before the file path. I do hope I've made that clear. 
Anyway, again, remembering the things we want to change here are the file path and the sound entry name. Now we should be done with this right here. I'm just going to keep this open for the sake of demonstration. Next step, we need to handle the actual sound files. And go ahead and download and install Goldwave if you don't have it already. I've linked to it in the description. It's a free program. And of course, it should go without saying that you can use whatever music you want. But if you choose to use copyrighted music, please don't release that publicly. Because, uh, you know, the copyright companies really don't like that. But uh, if you're going to use it just for personal use, only, so that only you can hear it, there's nothing wrong with that. At least there frickin' shouldn't be. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use something that I composed, and therefore I own the rights to it, YouTube. Uh, let's see. I guess I will use this. Now, whenever you drag and drop your music file, it can be an MP3 or Wave or whatever, into Goldwave. The first thing you'll want to do is select all with Control A, and then up here click Edit under Channel, and choose left or right. It doesn't matter which. And then create a new file. You can do this with Control N. And under the settings here, just make sure that the number of channels is mono, and the sample rate is 44,100. Now you can paste your copied file into this new channel with Control V. Oops, <laughs> gotta hover over it, I guess. Control, ah, well, didn't copy it apparently. Oh. So, I guess I missed that part. Anyways, uh, select all your old song, the one you just imported, and then Control C to copy it, and then paste that into your new channel. There, uh, yeah. Now you can delete your old stuff. And as you can see, we've got a mono channel song right here. Now, the reason you want to end up with a mono channel song is because by default, all of the jukebox music in Left 4 Dead 2 only has a mono channel. And if you export them in stereo, that will lag your game to hell and you won't even be able to hear the music. So just before you export your wave, make sure that it is in mono. Now, next thing we want to do here is click up on the Cues menu right here, and then you want to create two. So first, click New, and then you can name this whatever you want. Hit At Start and OK. Do the same thing again. Click New. Give it a different name, but this time click At Finish. So you'll want two cue points, one at the very beginning and one at the very end of your song. With those created, you can click Close and export your wave. So File, Save As. Make sure that it is a wave. And under the attributes here, make sure that it is PCM signed 16-bit mono. That's what you want. Now, when naming your wave file, you want to make sure that you go by the same names that you specified in your Level Sounds script. So going back to that here, I've got the file path set to music to your H test music one dot wave so I'm gonna name this test music one dot wave okay to sum up what we did when we imported our music file we cut it into one mono channel then added cue points one at the beginning one at the end and then exported it with the same name that we specified in the level sounds text you can go ahead and close gold wave unless you're doing more sound files and uh, with that done, you'll want to move your new exported WAV file into its correct folder in your add-ons folder. I've already got stuff here, of course. And uh, there's one last thing that we have to do before it's ready to work. And I'll show you. Just go ahead and start up Left 4 Dead 2. Okay, finally. Now, as I said, open up Left 4 Dead 2, but don't start a game yet, just open your console. 
And in this, you want to enter sound, oops, uh, SND underscore build sound cache for directory. And after that, type in add ons forward slash, and then type in the name of the add ons folder you're using. And because I'm using test map, I type in add ons slash test map here, then hit enter. And depending on how many sound files you've got in there, it could take a second or several minutes. But once it's done, you'll see the console pack, uh, pop back up and it will say elapsed time, so many seconds. And then you can type in exit or quit. And with that done, as you can see right here, if you go into the folder, go into sound and you'll see a new sound.cache file there. And that is why we just did that console stuff. Now the only thing you have to do is VPK this folder. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto my little shortcut to vpk.executable. And that should just about do it. This has been a little bit long-winded, but I hope it's been helpful nonetheless. Uh, thanks for your time. This has been Dr. House.